Hi everyone, it's a daily 10-minute business and finance news wrap for this Tuesday, the 18th of October 2022. Later, the RBA discusses the merit of a 25 basis point increase to the official cash rate over a 50 basis point rise. But first to the Australian share market, which really bounced back up 1.7% on the 200, 6,729. It follows the UK's decision to backflip on a tax cut plan. For more, I spoke earlier with Scott Phillips from The Motley Fool. Scott, the market's up today. Why and how much does it have to do with the UK's reversal of its recent tax policy? At Ricardo G'day, I think you've already given us the answer, which is exactly that, in large part. More confidence globally. Now, of course, we're up on the back of a US gain, so that's the direct cause. The indirect cause, the cause I think, is the fact the UK economic policy and fiscal policy seems to have recovered some sense, some sense of normalcy, of reasonableness, maybe some might say, uh, and the world equity markets are benefiting as a result. Can you go through it in a bit more detail? Why have the UK moves had such an impact on global markets, especially on equities and currencies? Look, I think it was a case of this being a very, very, uh, I'll say reckless, but potentially, potentially courageous, as the uh, as the US Minister uh, Cast might say. Uh, strategy to try and think about what might make a difference for the UK economy. This was a resurgence of what we might call trickle-down economics and the degree to which that changed the UK government budget position and made the Bank of England go and buy bonds at exactly the same time they didn't want to be doing that. That was exactly what they were trying to avoid, really put the world into a bit of a spin. Was it ever as big a deal as it seemed? Probably not on a global scale. The UK is important for financial markets, probably not super important economically for the rest of us. But it really did, I guess, make the market wonder. And right now, so much fragility when it comes to confidence, that was enough to really knock the market off its axis. Okay. I guess it also means that fiscal policy in the UK is now more aligned with monetary policy, with the Bank of England lifting rates. What about here? We heard from the Reserve Bank and its October board meeting minutes. What did you take out of it? Uh, that they are absolutely resolute in what they're planning to do. or They are going to continue to raise rates. They have inflation in their sights. And thus far, at least, they're not going to be pushed off that aim. They also, though, talked about the fact that increasing by a smaller amount, as they did last time, lets them go longer. There was some sense that maybe that reduction meant they were closer to the end of the rate rising cycle. Their language seems to suggest that it wasn't a case of getting towards a destination, but rather being able to take longer to get to that same destination, to have a longer impact on spending and on policy. Whether that ends up being the case as money is spent and as the economy responds is an open question. But when we all assumed maybe they wanted to pause, maybe they wanted to see what was going on, their language seems to be the reverse, which is they're going to go for longer. And this is part of that path. Back to the market today, locally, which sectors led the market higher? Any, any direct implication from the UK sort of thing? Not a lot of direct implication from from the palms. It really came down to, I think, general optimism on the market. When you see the market recover a bit of confidence, the old risk on, as we used to say, uh, no surprise. Tech grew, it always does in that circumstances. Other gains in real estate, which is a little bit of a surprise given the path for rates, but also consumer discretionary stocks. Again, confidence in the economy globally and locally tends to then show through in those businesses that are most directly affected by either the ability to raise capital in tech or spend that money when it comes to consumer stocks. But but just how much confidence? What, what are local companies actually saying about global growth and the outlook? Because we did hear from pallet maker Brambles today, which really has its finger on the pulse when it comes to global supply chains and demand. Mm-hmm. Maybe good news, maybe bad news. They are saying what governments and treasurers, finance ministers have been saying over the past couple of weeks. They are seeing a softening of demand going into next year, into 2023 in particular. Their forecast for the full year is still positive for the company, good news for shareholders, but a market re- reduction when it comes to the growth they're expecting. So they are expecting a meaningful slowdown. This is a company with more than 300 million pallets and containers in circulation. So to your point about finger on the pulse, they know exactly what's happening and who's doing what. Still uncertain. I think I think I would suggest they have any more certainty than those finance ministers or treasurers about what will happen, but they are sharing the general concern that things will start to slow, possibly meaningfully, and maybe as early as a couple of months' time. Scott Phillips there from The Motley Fool. Now to the Reserve Bank, which today released its minutes of the October board meeting, where it lifted the official cash rate by a less than expected 25 basis points. The market was expecting 50 
for What Now? I spoke earlier with Adelaide Timbrell. She's a senior economist at ANZ. Adelaide, the RBA minutes out today. It opted for a 25 basis point rise instead of 50, as we know from the uh, results of the meeting uh, earlier this month. But do we know why now? Yes, so the Reserve Bank has cited a few reasons for their 25 basis point hike. One being it will keep people focused on those interest rate rises for longer, which may make them more effective because, you know, um, when you're not worried about what your interest rate is, your behaviour doesn't change and then inflation doesn't change as well. Um, It is also a really big issue for the Reserve Bank that they have increased their cash rate very quickly in a short amount of time and they're looking for an opportunity to slow that down, which they have done by moving from 50 basis point hikes to 25 basis point hikes. Still, ANZ saying that the minute suggests a 25 basis point rise next month is the most likely outcome, even if the latest inflation read or the next inflation read is hot. Why? It does seem from the Reserve Bank's perspective that they are hoping to slow things down to the 25 basis point hike and use the number of months rather than the size of the hike to determine the final outcome of the cash rate. So it does look like they're not planning to go back to 50 basis point hikes, even if the inflation data is strong. They're hoping to just keep going one by one to get the outcome they need. What this means is that if inflation is higher than expected, the Reserve Bank's more likely to hit another 25 basis points on the December meeting. And then again in February, February is already in our ANZ forecast, but December would be more of a scenario if we do see that really strong inflation print. So more interest rates to come, but does it change where you think there'll be a peak in interest rates? We don't consider today's minutes to change our forecast of a peak of 3.6% for the Reserve Bank. However, we did change that forecast from 3.35 quite recently because once we realised the Reserve Bank was moving from 50s to 25s, we thought, okay, they're going to go slower, which means they could actually end up higher. The slower you increase interest rates, the more time you give people to adjust their spending. And it means that you can actually end up at a higher rate. Higher rates can be good for the Reserve Bank because what we saw before during COVID was they didn't have a lot to cut. And so the higher they end up, uh, the more rate cuts we have up our sleeve if something goes really wrong in the economy. And we're not expecting something to go wrong in the economy per se, but I think the last two years have taught us that Uh, surprises can and do arise. And the RBA has once again reminded us that it does take some time from when the RBA lifts the official cash rate to when it actually impacts uh, repayments on mortgages. What about the consumer? Are they still spending? What kind of ANZ data are you seeing? We have ANZ data up till mid-October for consumer spending. And what we're seeing is that in aggregate, there is no slowdown in spending. The only weakness in spending we're seeing reflects seasonal trends. You know, October is not the most exciting month for the retail sector, but there's nothing in what we're seeing in the data to suggest that a slowdown has begun. Travel agent spending has continued to grow. Furniture spending is really solid. This means that really big ticket items, which are the first to be delayed if people are worried about their finances, are not slowing down. And when we look at smaller ticket, little luxuries like dining and takeaway or clothing, we're seeing the same thing, no real slowdown. Next year is when we're much more likely to see a meaningful slowdown in spending. That's when those fixed rates expire. That's when every single household starts to actually feel the impact because the Reserve Bank is increasing cash, the cash rate every month. But if you're on mostly a fixed mortgage, you're not actually feeling that in your day to day. And if you've got a really big offset account and the average offset account is about 18 months worth of prepayments on a mortgage, then it's actually going to take a while to really feel the pain that creates a change in consumer spending. Adelaide Trimble there from ANZ. This SBS on the Money stream is provided for informational purposes only. The content in this stream should not be understood as constituting advice or a recommendation. It is not personal advice and it does not consider your personal circumstances or objectives. You should contact a licensed professional before making any financial decisions.